In this second video of our Essential Unix for Bioinformatics section, we're going to get started using and learning some key Unix commands together. Now, our approach that we're taking, of course, is to focus in on the 20 odd commands from this list here that uh, will make you productive immediately. And you'll actually use probably 95% of the time you're using Unix, even way out in the future, uh, for your research work. So first off, we're going to focus in on these 12 commands in this section here in this video that really deal with file system navigation or file control and viewing and editing text files. Now, the most important of these are the top three commands here, ls for listing the contents of a directory or a file system, cd for changing directory, and pwd for telling us where the hell we are in the file system or printing our working directory. And we've already covered those in our last uh, video in, in, in this uh, section. Now, these other four commands that are below we'll come to in a moment. But first, before we delve into them in, uh, in any more detail, we need to know something about this file system that we're trying to, uh, to navigate around and manipulate and, 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 and work with when we use these Unix. Uh, commands here. So as you would expect, you know, information in the Unix file system, like every other one really, it's stored in files, which of course can be stored in directories, also known as folders for non-nerds, right? But we call them directories here in Unix. And directories, of course, they can contain other directories or sub-directories here, really forming this uh, uh, like I'm showing here, this kind of tree or directory tree that people talk about the Unix a directory tree. Now that forward slash up there at the, at the top of this tree, that represents the root directory of the whole file system. And it's also used to, that's uh, forward slash as you'll see in a moment, it's also used when we type out anywhere else in the file system to separate directory names as you'll see in a minute. So when we log in first, or we just type cd at the at the uh, at your terminal there at the, sh at the shell interface, what will happen is you'll end up in your home area, right? This is the user's home area. So for me, when I type CD, I'll end up in this location. See my little thin yellow self there sitting in this location. I can type PWD, it'll print out where I am. In my case, this tells me where I am from the root of the Unix file system, okay? So it's telling me slash users slash Barry. That's where the little yellow guy is sitting right now, right there where he is. Now, a side note here is if it's if you're obviously not going to be in users Barry because your name's likely different than my name, more 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 likely than not, if Eva here logged into this computer, she would end up in her specific home area slash users slash Eva, for example, right? And yours is going to reflect whatever your login name is for the particular computer you're using to type these commands in. So now if I typed CD desktop so i'm going to move there from that home area from users barry into users barry desktop i will move my little guy here in this in this uh, diagram down into that location and if i now type ls what i'll see listed here is the files and directories in that location i don't actually see anything else outside that immediate directory or folder i don't see anything else by default around the file system it's like that little yellow person there, that little yellow guy, he's blinkered to the rest of the file system. By default, he can really only see the contents of the directory he's sitting in right now. Okay, so if I type PWD, it'll tell me where I'm sitting. It's the full path again from the root of the file system all the way from the top will be spat out. So slash users slash Barry slash desktop in this particular location. But, uh, so a key point here is, you know, the, the PWD, it returns the absolute path. An absolute path means it's absolute from the root of the file system. It prints it out with these forward slashes separating each uh, directory name here. Now, if I make a new directory, I'm sitting here in my desktop directory and I type mkdir for make directories. This is gonna make a new folder, right? And it'll appear and live in the directory I'm currently sitting in, in this case, in my desktop. I haven't changed into it, right? My little yellow guy is still sitting there in the desktop and that's what he can see, right? 
So he won't see any new contents that's in the desktop or anything that he's blinkered unless I point it to that location or change directory into it. And the same would be true if I've downloaded a file. For example, if I downloaded a, a data.csv from our class website, it would go to our a downloads folder, for example. So how then would I be able to list this file or ls it or read it in to a program that I want to do something with it, right? Because remember, these commands, they're blinkered to show only the contents of the directory I'm currently sitting in. How would I point my program, or ls even, to this new file here in my downloads folder? Well, I can use and always use the absolute path from the root of the file system. So again, I would use slash users slash Barry slash downloads data.csv to list it out or to read it into some uh, program that I'm going to use that data for some analysis, for example, or read it into R, for example. You can use the absolute path to find it. Now, another way to do it is use what's called the relative path. I don't have to go all the way back to the root of the file system. I can type dot dot, which means jump me back up a level. So I'll go back to Barry in this case, and then slash downloads data.csv. That relative path is relative to where I'm currently sitting, where that little yellow guy is sitting here in the file system. Now there's another way, and you'll see this quite often, you'll see it in our hands-on session for this week, and it's to use a little shortcut, the tilde character here. For me, that little key on my keyboard is in the upper left-hand corner of the of the keyboard. It's, I have to hold the shift and push that. That's the little squiggle, often called a, a tilde key. But that's still the absolute path. What the tilde is, is a very useful shortcut for users by. It's a shortcut to the home area, your particular home area. So in your case, the tilde will work to your home array, it doesn't have to be Barry, it'll get your username in this case, which is why it's useful, because it's not dependent on any particular username that you have to spell out. But that's still the absolute path. So, for example, if I took my little uh, yellow person here, little yellow self that's sitting still here in user's Barry desktop, and I CD'd into class 16. I can just write CD class 16 because it's relative to where I am. It'll know to change into the folder that's sitting off where I currently, where I was before in the desktop directory. So now I'm in here in class 16. How now would I read this data.csv? Well, it's the same answer as before. I can use the relative, I can use the, sorry, the absolute path from the root of the file system. That hasn't changed. That's still where it is. That'll always work here in this file system. Unless I change my directory structure, it'll work. But I can't use that second way I had before, which was that relative path. If I type dot dot, that'll just drop me from class 16 down to desktop there. And then it'll try and find a downloads off of desktop and it's not gonna work. It'll give an error message in this case. So that relative path is always sensitive to where you are because it's relative to where you're sitting in the file system currently. So it's more fragile. So just to recap, we've talked about absolute path, which is specifies a location from the root of the file system, relative path, which specifies a location starting from the current location you are. Then there's these shortcuts. There's the dot dot, which drops you uh, up to the, the parent directory, for example. There's dot, which just means the current directory where you're currently sitting. There's the tilde, which is a super useful shortcut for your home area. And then you may have already discovered as you go through the tab key, just the same as, as R, it'll auto-complete file names and directory names and make you look like you know what you're typing super quick. If people are watching over your shoulder, it makes you look like you're a, you know, you're a hacker, that you're typing super quick. I use the tab key all the time, not just because I'm lazy, which I am, but because it, because it auto-completes. And if it auto-completes, it means I've spelt it correctly. So auto-complete is super useful. The tab key is a good practice to use because it means you haven't mistyped or finger fudged some name. Because if it can't autocomplete it, you've made a mistake. That directory or that file doesn't reside there where you think it does and you need to think again about what you're doing. Okay, so the next, uh, so, so again, we've covered LS, CD, PWD and make directory. The next 
two commands here, copy, cp, and move, mv. They kind of do what, what their name suggests. They'll copy a file from a source file to a, a, a destination file. It's always source destination in the Unix world, as we'll see with some other uh, commands like scp later. So they'll take copy, the name of one file you want to copy, and then the name of the new file you want to you make. Uh, so you'll have a, a duplicate of that file with a different file name, for example. Move does essentially the same thing, but really it, it it's it's like rename because the existing file will no longer be there. So it's like rename a file, source to destination. Now the final one here that's below the, the second red line, that's rm. What that will take is a name of a file, or you can also delete directories. And I want you to maybe not use that yet until we're later into the, into the hands-on session. And the reason for that is it's kind of dangerous for folks that maybe aren't uh, too sure what they're doing yet because there's no trash bin or recycle bin in the Unix world. Once you remove something, it's gone. There's no way to get it back. So people kind of accidentally delete you know, their entire work, their whole directory structure by accident. Now, it's not tremendously easy to do this by accident, but it can be done. So just be careful because there's no way to recover from it unless you have version control system like Git that we'll talk about in a separate section already set up to, to go back and recover from these things. So RM is a little dangerous. You know, the old quote is, Unix gives you just enough rope to shoot yourself in the foot. Oh, you didn't know that command could also f fire bullets with that option. You know, so there's, with great power comes great responsibility kind of quotes that come with this. Just hold off on RM just for a moment and don't delete your entire file system, right? That's the, the key there. So at this stage, what I want you to uh, uh, to try out is also the man command. Man stands for manual, and you'll get help on any of these Unix commands, any of those in that little table that we had earlier on or that we're going to introduce in the hands-on session when we come to a new command that you don't maybe know or can't remember what it does. If you type man space the name of the command, it'll bring up the help uh, documentation here in your terminal window. So here, for example, below, I've done man of the pwd command, and it tells me uh, more about this command. Of course, Google is also an amazing way to find help on these things, and it's often a better way when you're starting out to do these things. Just ask Google what these commands do or what the options to achieve the particular um, behavior that you want out of these commands. Google can often get you there more quickly when you're starting out. Another side note here is that unfortunately in git bash the man command it, it doesn't work. You'll have to use the minus minus help option for a given command. And then of course the man or the manual it's only really helpful when you actually know the name of the command you want to uh, you want to look for and get help on. Right, so the appros command will search for man pages that match these kinds of keywords. And then another important side note here is if you're using Windows, that man, the manual sometimes isn't installed and they get bashed. So you can use the minus minus help option to the command itself to pull up help in these cases. So if you want then, to, so just a couple more commands before we, uh, before we, uh, uh, take a break and finish here for a second, is if you want to investigate the contents of a given file, now there's a, uh, a common command called more that you'll see a lot of people use, M-O-R-E, you know, you list the contents of your directory and then you do more to see the more of the contents within a file and it'll print out the contents of the file that you can page through. That more is, a, is a, an older uh, program and it's kind of been superseded now by a, by a newer, program called less and of course the nature of unix and nerds being what they are you, you know the person who wrote the better version of more said more is less so less is more so they called it less and that's funny and great if you're already nerdy and in this field and you can remember that not a very helpful name of a of a command for newcomers but it is called less and to use that you can use the arrow keys to to, to go down and up thing and you can use the space bar the back or and to get out of it you push q to quit Daddy, okay, there's also smiley face on the yeah there's a smiley face there's also the head 
tail and cat and more commands that more I've already talked about head what it does is it views the first six lines of a file doesn't it Owen <laughs> and tail views the last six lines of a file a bit like the the uh, R commands that we've seen and I think because of the interruptions it's a good time to stop here and we'll continue with creating text files and text editors and also the how we actually use Unix right the real power of Unix of course or how we actually use Unix is when we can combine these commands together to do more new and cool things all right yeah you can sit on my lap I'm gonna just stop this video here okay see you in the next one folks thank you